How to design an amplifier with single op amp that simultaneously realize very high input impedance, in this case, resistor on the order of mega ohm, and considerably large voltage gain in, is discussed in this circuit design example. The circuit shown is one practical way to design such circuit. At the input, we have voltage V in connected to resistor R1 to mega ohm, which is very large resistor and the resistor R2 and R5 are also sizably large resistor on the same ballpark as R1. At the output we have a potential meter R3 and a resistor R4 that are assumed to be considerably smaller than uh, the other resistors. So R2 is assumed to be much larger than R4 and much larger than R3. These are the assumptions in this circuit. We want to quickly analyze and find the formula for V out First, I'm going to find the accurate formula, then there is a quick way to show the approximate uh, practical formula for output voltage. Okay, so to start quickly finding that, let's make the assumption that the positive-negative supply voltages, like plus minus 10 or uh, 15, if it is a dual supply design, are applied, and then at the output of the op amp, we can see the output via potential meter R3 and then resistor R3 is connected to inverting or negative terminal properly, indicating that we have negative feedback in this circuit, which guarantee or enforces op amp to operate in linear region, not saturated. So op amp operating in linear region, and that means uh, negative feedback is guaranteeing the virtual short, which is voltage at positive and voltage at negative input terminal for op amp are the same. Positive terminal via resistor R5 is connected to ground. Practically there is no current that is going or zero current that is going through R5 so there is no voltage drop therefore positive terminal is grounded. Now because of virtual short it means negative terminal is also at zero volt effectively negative terminal is at virtual ground. Okay, so that zero volt appears on one side of this resistor R1. On the other side, we have Vn, which means the voltage drop across R1 is Vn. Therefore, there is this current that is flowing through R1, which is current I1, and the value of that is Vn over R1. So let's name this equation 1. Now, this current I1 can only continue flowing through the R2, which is effectively in series with R1, because no current can flow through the input terminal of ideal op amp that has infinite impedance. This current I1 keeps going and it will get to node X which is in between uh, which is for the node in between resistor R4 and the potential meter R3. It has a voltage that I'm going to refer to it as Vx. So what is the value of Vx? Obviously you can see we have sort of an inverting amplifier here given the scheme or topology, so we can write quickly Vx as expected for an inverting amplifier is 0 volt minus the voltage drop across R2 which is, so Vr2 is equal to, of course, we have R2 times I2, I1, that is passing through R2. So 0 minus R2 times I1, which if I use equation 1, the equation that I just showed you, will give us exactly what we expected to see, minus R2 over R1 times Vn. Okay, so we know the formula for Vx. Let's refer to this as equation 2. Now let's write a KCL or Kirchhoff current law or circuit current law at node X, which means the current that is coming in I1 plus also I2 that is also coming toward node X should be equal to the current that is going out, I3. Just a side note, the reason that I say I2 is also going from ground toward node X because if I1 is coming from ground toward node X, then of course when we have a ground here, there should be a current I2 that is also going from ground to node X. So that's because the assumption we made for I1. Okay, so therefore I can write KCL or Kirchhoff current law uh, at, or law of preservation of current, at node X which states that the sum of two incoming current, I1 plus I2, is equal to outgoing current, I3. So let's now substitute for these currents. I'm going to use equation, uh, say, 1, this one, to substitute for I1. So it means V in over R1. Plus, I am going to substitute for I2 
uh, just by doing a simple KVL here, 0 minus Vx, that's the voltage drop across R4, divide by R4. So it would be 0 minus Vx, divide by R4. And finally, for the, the other side of the equation, for I3, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Vx minus V out is the voltage drop across R3, and then divide by R3. So Vx minus V out, divide by R3. Let's do a quick reshuffling. So I'm going to move Vx over R3 to the other side, so things look a little bit cleaner. Minus V out over R3 is equal to minus, uh, let's say, V v in over r1 so i'm going to keep this one yet and minus vx times 1 over r4 plus 1 over r3 okay one further step this vx can be substituted using equation 2 so i can write instead of vx this value so let's do that uh, i'm going to use equation 2 here so from using equation 2 Let's just put it this way. Using equation 2, I can say minus V out over R3 is equal to V in over R1, and then substituting for this guy, we get minus minus, so it would be plus R2 over R1 times V in, and the rest of it, 1 over R4. Let me move this to the other side so that we have enough space so I'm gonna just uh, move this to let's say here and then we have more space that would be easier to have this equation okay so we have minus V out over R3 equal to V in over R1 and then plus V in R2 over R1 times 1 over R4 plus 1 over R3. Okay, uh, the last thing I want to do here is just uh, let's factor out. Uh, if we just clean up, becomes V out equal to minus. We get R2 over R1 V in and I just factored out minus R2 over R1 and then multiply both sides by R3. So what I'm going to get as a result is this outcome. I'm going to get uh, R3 over R2 plus 1 plus R3 over R4. Okay, uh, and then I can move this V in to the other side as denominator, obviously. So V in, V out over V in equal to this thing and the name for V out over V in, of course, is voltage gain of the circuit, AV. All right, so uh, obviously what I can say here is now I'm going to use the assumption given to me in the circuit. R2 is assumed to be, this resistor, is assumed to be much larger than R4 and much larger than R3. So R3 over R2 is approximately negligible compared to 1 plus R3 over R4. I am going to say, we know in this circuit, R2 in denominator is much, much larger than R3 in numerator. So, therefore, a voltage gain is approximately equal to, I'm going to just neglect this component because, as I said, R2 is much larger than R3. So, the voltage gain, therefore, practically becomes equal to minus R2 over R1 times 1 plus R3 times 1 plus R3 over R4. Okay, this is approximate formula for voltage gain, and this is the accurate formula for voltage gain in this circuit. So what is the benefit? Well, uh, one faster way, fastest, I mean sort of a much faster way to get to this approximate formula, if we don't care about the accurate formula, would have been at this note saying that, okay, if this is the assumption given to us, I can make the assumption effectively a current I1 because we have same voltage drop across because of zero volt and Vx, we have the same voltage drop across resistor R2 as voltage drop across resistor R4. But if R2 is much larger than R4 as shown here, then I can make the assumption I1 is 
much smaller than I2. I2 is this one, I1 is this one. Resistor R4 is much smaller than R2, so the current I2 is way, way bigger than I1. So in the process, I can say, given that R3 is also very small compared to R2, then effectively as if the whole I2 practically goes through I3, assuming this is true. So if that is the case, then uh, the voltage from Vx to V out becomes a simple voltage division. So if from the get-go we wanted to go, we wanted to make that assumption, I could have said V out is just the voltage division between R4 and R3, which would be then effectively saying is uh, just 1 plus R3 over R4 times Vx. And Vx is already what we know here from equation 2. So we could have said, therefore, V out is 1 plus R3 times, divide by R4 times minus R2 over R1 times Vn. And we exactly get to what we got here after we found the accurate formula. So that was the, uh, the fastest way if we wanted to go, uh, as I said, to the approximate formula from the get-go. With that said, let's just consider what's going on. The input impedance is 2 meg because uh, this node is 0, so we can say R in in this circuit is 2 mega ohm. Uh, so very large, that's good. If R2, for example, is also set to R1 uh, equal to 2 mega ohm, then R5 matching uh, basically trying to match at the positive terminal what is seen impedance-wise at the negative terminal, which is two R1 parallel with R2, 2 meg parallel with 2 meg, give us 1 meg, so practically maybe a good choice would be for R5 equal to 1 meg. Now, good examples would be when we set R3, for example, say equal to um, 50 or 100 kilo ohm, so let's say 50 kilo ohm, which is much smaller than the 2 meg that you have for R2 on the order of, say, uh, 40 times smaller. And if we set R4 equal to 500 ohm, let's say 0.5 kilo ohm, then we get to exactly what we wanted because input impedance is very large, 2 mega ohm, and voltage gain then translate to minus uh, R over R, so this becomes 1, and then is just 1 plus R3 over R4 and negative sign so it's going to be so it's going to be minus 1 plus uh, then 50k divided by 0.5k so we get minus uh, 101 volt over volt voltage gain from the circuit while the input impedance is very large uh, just bear in mind that for from for uh, getting this both of these uh, in a traditional let's say um, inverting amplifier is very difficult because if you wanted to directly get this kind of gain, then you wanted you needed to set the feedback resistor R2 to instead of two mega ohm you had to set it to two hundred mega ohm, and that is practically not feasible and the circuit won't be properly functioning with such a large resistor in the feedback loop. So. Uh, but we achieved the, what we wanted using just single stage op amp design. I hope that this example is helpful in terms of showing how we can achieve both requirements just with uh, single op amp.